All right, it's good to see you this morning. It's great to have our engaged service with us and joining us uh, through live streaming. Also, I want to just say hi to those people that watch live streaming. Uh, it's a great honor to always have them with us, and that, that is such a cool thing. Today, we're talking about Lean On Me, and we're talking during this series about how do you help a friend that's going through a difficult time. We've taken a couple of looks at a couple of different things, but today I want to talk about a really heavy subject that I, it's a little bit tough to talk about, but it's important for us in the church to lead the way in the discussion about talking about difficult things in our society. Amen? So I want to talk today about how do you help a friend that is going through a season of discouragement, a season of depression. And there's some great verses in the Bible that talk about this. And the first one is in Proverbs 17. Read this out loud with me if you would. Let's read this together. A joyful heart is good medicine, but depression drains one's strength. Man, I've been there where it just drains you. Now, we have to be wise enough today. When I'm talking about depression, helping a friend through the season of depression, we have to be wise enough to know that there's a slice of depression that I cannot help you with, a slice of depression that's called clinical depression. We have to realize that we are so blessed that God has given doctors the wisdom and the minds to help some people with different types of medication, things like that, but that's not the majority of us here today. The majority of us that are here, we suffer just from time to time for another, from another type of depression where there is just this gloom that sets in in our lives. There's this helplessness that sets in. And the truth is that you and I, we respond to different ways to those seasons of depression or seasons of discouragement that we go through like that. I'm not sure about you, but I'm just willing to admit right now that when I go through a season of, of discouragement and depression that I eat. Anybody with me on that? <laughs> some of you, some of you go, I'm not going to admit to anything today. How many of you, you know, you just kind of, you just kind of sleep a lot more. How many of you shop? Shopping's your thing. When you're discouraged, you shop. Anybody like that? <laughs> some, <laughs> some of you, I see this. I see you husbands looking at your wives going, come on, admit it. There we go. <laughs> some of you withdraw, you pull back. But I just want to stand up here and just tell you today that, listen, when I'm going through a season of discouragement, one of the things I do, I don't want anybody around me. I want to pull back. I want to withdraw. That's one of the things I do. I want to have an IV hooked up with Die Dr. Pepper. Anybody else like that? <laughs> I, I hear you, Dr. Joe, in the engaged service. You are, you are telling me not to do that. But, but I just want to be by myself. And, and, and I'll just let you in. My whole family knows this, so this is no big secret. Uh, if they were here, they'd tell you this. But, but I, I clean when I get in, in, a little bit discouraged. Anybody else cleaners when they do that? Yeah, a couple of you. Yeah. <laughs> But I want to do a little bit of mass, mass confession today. I, I want us all to kind of be open and honest this morning. Who would be willing to admit? I've already told you what I do. But who would be willing to admit today that from time to time that life just seems a little bit overwhelming, that there's this gloom that sets in from time to time, not always. Anybody just say, hey, Craig, once in a while, that's me. Would, would anybody just say, yeah, look around just real quick. See, this is so good. You're not alone. See, the, 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 the temptation is to think, well, I'm alone in this. Nobody else deals with this. It's just me. A lot of times we are depressed and we feel discouraged and we feel all alone and it's natural. It's a natural state. We're human. We're, we struggle. This side of heaven, sometimes life sucks and it just sucks the life out of you is what I meant to say. Life sucks the life out of you. I, I, I said that wrong. <laughs> Man, I, I slipped. Sorry about that. <laughs> And the problem isn't checking into, checking in depression hotel. The problem happens when you start paying a monthly rate. Hmm. But let me give you some good news. I believe that depression or going through a season of discouragement is, is right at the door of opening up to some real good spiritual things that God has for you and me. I really believe that when people are going through a season of discouragement or a season of depression, they are so close to God doing something really great in their life. As a matter of fact, in the Bible, it's awesome the people that, that God used, and, and, and you see people that go through this deep depression in the Bible, these great characters that we know about, and God used that time, that discouragement, and, and, and just opened the door to to using their lives in incredible ways. Three examples I think of is Moses and Elijah and Jonah. All through, all three of them dealt with serious depression. 
And, and I, I just want to look at one scene just real quick of Moses in Numbers chapter 11. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn there. If not, it's in your notes and the verses will be coming up on the screen. But let me give you a little background. Moses was the leader of the Jewish people. And Moses led the people of Israel, the Jewish people, out of capti- captivity of Egypt. And, and, and they had been slaves uh, with Pharaoh. And, and they'd been slaves for 400 years. And they cried out to God. And God heard them. And God said, Moses, I want you to go to my people and I want you to lead them out of slavery. And God promised them this promised land, this land that they could get rooted in, but it takes 40 years for them to get there. And there's all this, during the 40 years, there's all this complaining that's going on. And, and even so, they had food every single day. Even, even though they complained, they had manna every day. They were no longer slaves. They were no longer in captivity. They had been set free. And yet, they're complaining all the time. And those of you who are moms, how many moms? Raise your hands, moms. Come on, let, let, let's, let's see you. If you can imagine, moms, imagine two million whiny babies. <laughs> and you're the leader of the crew. You're the one that's, and, and, and they're complaining because it was the same food every day. They were going, Moses, how many ways can you cook manna from heaven? I mean, we don't know how to bake it any other way. I mean, can you get the food network to tell us, here's a, a new way to cook it? And it's so exciting. But, and, and, and in fact, I just thought of it. I thought, okay. Just think of your favorite food right now. Just think of the food that you, you natural, when you were wanting some, how, how many of you, it's pizza. Anybody pizza? That's all? Okay, then tell me, what's your favorite food? Somebody yell out your favorite food. Tacos. Hamburgers. Okay, so I want you French fries. Okay, let's not talk about French fries, man. That's, that's not fair. I want you to think of your favorite food right now. And, and I'm going to ask you this question. Could you eat that food? every day. Just think of it, day after day after day after day. My favorite food is in the genre of candy. And and, and I love Twizzlers. Anybody love Twizzlers here? Yeah, some of you are with me on this. When we go on vacation, we always get a bunch of Twizzlers and we open them up. And I love the peel, the pull and peel ones, you know, because you can sit there and pull and peel. And it just, it's one of those perfect candies. And, and when I get depressed, I naturally just go to candy. And the peel and pull is just absolutely, it's so delicious. It's absolutely fabulous. And I, I think, I'm not sure about this, but I think that I could, for the rest of my life, every day I could eat Twizzlers. And I, I would love to give it my best shot of eating Twizzlers every day of my life. I think I could do it. Sometimes I pray that, God, could you just like manna from heaven, could you send Twizzlers down and I'd eat it and and I'd be happy. And and so I I thought, you know, today I'm going to bring some Twizzlers with me. I heard somebody right back here. Did did I hear some kids? Did you, would you like some Twizzlers? Let me ask you just real quick. Would you share if I gave them to you? (laughs) Sean, can you catch that? Can you throw those back to him? I just want to say this, that if you're in the engaged service and and you're going, hey, listen, we didn't get any Twizzlers, in the center row, fifth row back in the center, underneath the seat of that fifth row center is some Twizzlers. If you'll reach down and grab those, open up and share with the people around you. And if you're watching live streaming, I went and put Twizzlers in your sock drawer. If you go to your sock drawer, no, it's not true. But listen, I could eat Twizzlers every day of my life. I I think if I had a Twizzler, if I had one of those uh, peel and pulls, I I would never complain in my life. If I had that every day, never complain. But Moses is getting all these complaints. So here's here's what happens in verse 10, chapter 11 of of Numbers. Moses heard from all the family standing in the front of their tents, weeping. Uh, One person says wailing. And the Lord became very angry. Moses also was agitated. And and, and Moses said to the Lord, "Why why are you treating me, your servant, so miserably? What did I do to deserve the burden of people, of a people like this? Are are they my children, Moses said? Or am I their father? Is that, is that? why you have told me to carry them to my arms like a nurse carries a baby to the land you swore to give to their ancestors. Where, here's what Moses says. Where am I supposed to get meat for all these people? They keep complaining and saying, give us meat. I can't carry all these people by myself. The load is too heavy. God, I'd rather you kill me than treat me like this. Please spare my life of misery. Did you hear that line? Just go, I'd rather you kill me. Did you hear that? I've never said that line, but I've said this line, God, why me? Anybody ever said that before? 
You know what that phrase is? Lord, why me? That phrase is a phrase of depression. It's a phrase of discouragement. Moses said, I'd rather God you just kill me than treat me like this. Elijah, remember three people that we're looking at. Elijah said, I've had enough, Lord. Just take my life. Jonah said, just kill me now, Lord. I'd rather be dead than alive. But in that, there was this door that they were right up next to and, and, and hope was right around the corner. I see hope uh, that they're on, right on the verge of being used by God in a great way. Listen, if you, if you are going through a season of depression, a season of discouragement, I wanna tell you today, there is hope that you are right at the door of God doing something incredible. There's hope on the other side of the door, amen? We, we get in and out of depression for all kinds of reasons. Sometimes it's a, it's a physical reason. Sometimes we're just exhausted. Sometimes there's chronic pain. Sometimes there's low blood sugar. That's why I love Twizzlers. You keep Twizzlers around, you're good. <laughs> Sometimes there's emotional reasons. Sometimes there's loneliness. Sometimes it's a spiritual reason. Sometimes we have so much guilt, we can't seem to forgive uh, ourselves and, and, and we go through this unforgiveness. And, 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 and maybe, maybe it's just simply because you're going through a season of depression because you're an Arizona Cardinals fan and it's a tough time to be an Arizona Cardinals fan. <laughs> but you know what I know? There are some things that, are, that I've seen in people that are going through a season of depression, discouragement, that are like warning signs. When I talk to people that, that, that are going through this season of gloom and loneliness, they kind of point to three things. And I want to take you to your notes. If you have your notes, it's at the bottom of your bulletin. I wanna take you to three signs, warning signs to look for of things that, hey, you might be headed toward a season of, of discouragement or depression. Number one, it, 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 it's, it's so common, and that is fatigue. I, I'm defining fatigue, if you'll write this in, as being consumed by activity. Moses said the load is too heavy. I'm just tired, I, I can't handle it. Imagine Moses' life, he's leading two million people, imagine being at the help desk for two million people, and, 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 and then they come to Moses and they complain and say, Moses, I don't like where my tent's located. Moses, my spouse is not treating me nice. Moses, I have a hangnail. And all this, all this complaining going on, in all three of these cases, Moses, Elijah, and Jonah, physical, physical exhaustion was a major factor of their depression. So here's what I'm gonna have you do today. I want you to act like there's a mirror right in front of you. There's nobody else here. It's just you, and you're holding up a mirror. And in each one of these three points, I want you to hold a mirror up to your life, and I want you to look at your own life, and I want you to see what's going on in you. So let me ask you, as you're holding up that mirror, how tired are you? How worn out are you? Do you have to, 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 to do too many things on your to-do list? Do, do, you, do you need to cancel some appointments, some obligations? Do you need to take a day off or, or a week off? Do you need to just slow down? If you're feeling fatigued, there's a great prayer that I found in Psalm 6, chapter 6, verse 2, and David writes this, and it helps me out so much. King David wrote, I am worn out, O Lord, have pity on me. Give me strength, for I am completely exhausted. First thing is fatigue. The second warning sign that you're headed toward, or your friend is headed towards depression, is fear. And if you'll write this in, that you're consumed by worry. Moses says, where am I supposed to get meat to feed all of these people? If, you, if we were to study the, the, the life of Moses, you're gonna find, we're gonna find that Moses worried about a lot of things. M Moses often liked to play God and, and Moses assumed responsibility which God never intended for, for Moses to take on. God wanted Moses to take the people and lead the people of Israel out of Egypt, but God never told Moses to provide all of the people's needs, amen? And that was God's job, but Moses worried about that. Again, here's what I want you to do. I want you to hold up a mirror to your own life, and I want you to ask this question. There's nobody else here, just you and God. And I want you to ask the question just for your own life. You don't have to say anything to anybody. You don't have to tell me. But listen, here's the question. What is it that you worried about all the time that really is not your responsibility, it's God's responsibility? The image that I have in my mind is that worry is like a sponge. 
and it's soaking up all the joy in today's life and it's leaving a residue of fear in my life. Isn't that a great picture? I thought somebody would go, ooh. Listen, I'll say it again, so we'll give you another shot at it. Worry wipes away today's joy, and it leaves a residue of fear. Yeah, see, I I knew you'd love it. Number three. The third warning sign to look out for is frustration. This is a biggie. This is, this, is, this is one that often cuts the feet right out from underneath me. And, and, and here's what I put in your notes. Frustration is being consumed by unmet expectations. Unmet expectations. Moses said, why are you treating me so miserably? What did I do to deserve this? You know what that is? That's an unmet expectation. Think about Moses. He's, he sacrificed everything to lead these people. And he's, he's looking at them and he's going, okay, two million people is going, okay, gang, I bought you, brought you through the plagues. I brought you across the Red Sea. You've got food every day. I know it's not too comfortable. I, I, I get that. I've got sand in places, Moses said, that I didn't even know I had. And, and would you just cut me some slack? And you would think that the people would just stop complaining for a little bit, but they didn't. They just kept on complaining. But, 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 but listen to me, that, you know what that is? That's unmet expectations. Unmet expectations lead to frustration in our lives. Some of you are sitting here today and you have unmet expectations. Some of you are sitting here today, and if if you're really honest, you'd say, you know what? My marriage isn't what I hoped it would be. My friendships are not as deep as I want them to be. The the, the job, my career path is not what I hoped it would deliver. I thought it would would deliver joy and security, and it's fallen way short. And you had dreams for your life, and you're sitting here today, and you have unmet expectations. And because of those unmet expectations, you are experiencing frustration in your life. Here's what happens in my life. Here's my story. When I have unmet expectations, it is so frustrating, but here's what I do. I wind up focusing in on the person that I had an expectation of, and I focus in on that person, and all of a sudden it brings frustration to my life. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, that, but that's a lot of us, right? Or if I focus on the situation that doesn't turn out the way I want it to turn out, then you know what happens? I get so focused on that little picture of that situation that I miss the big picture of God's perspective of my life. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Could could any of those three things, fatigue, fear, and frustration, could, could possibly, could they be why you're moving in the direction, or maybe you have a friend that's moving in the direction of depression or discouragement. We all visit depression. It's part of life. It's part of being a human being, but there's hope on the other side. So let's get into the, to the hope that Jesus offers. Jesus offers us this incredible hope. Flip your notes over if you would. No matter what cause of depression you might have, Jesus offers you exactly what you need to break out of that season of depression. And the answer to, to depression is not some cute little song, tomorrow, tomorrow, the sun will come out tomorrow. I mean, some cute little redheaded kid, that's not helpful to me. <laughs> or some little meme, some cute little thing, and, or somebody, you know, gets in my face and says, come on, Craig, snap out of it. That doesn't help me. Or, or, or say, you know, Craig, don't be sad. That's not helpful. That's like saying, don't be ugly. What can I do about it? People need hope, not hope found in a book, not hope found in a slogan or some trinket. The hope we need is tied to Jesus Christ. Anybody just say amen to that? There is hope that Jesus offers. So I want to share with you on the back side of your notes, I want to share whether you're, you, you're going through fatigue or full of fear or frustration and you're headed down that road to a season of depression or maybe you're already there. Listen, there is three things that Jesus offers that I think are so powerful today. Number one, Jesus offers me power that I don't have. Would you write that in? Jesus offers me power that I don't have. When I'm fatigued, when I'm tired, and, and, and when I'm consumed by activity. Jesus offers me a power so that I can keep on going. I'm really interested in human strength. I'm not sure about you, but I'm always been fascinated by weightlifters and and bodybuilders and ESPN. They used to have this show called The World's Strongest Man. Anybody ever watch that? And they would get these guys that would would like pull these semis and they'd put this thing up and they'd have a rope and they'd, 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 they'd pull the semi with their teeth. That's strong. Or they like take a live elephant and they curl it with their arms. (laughs) Love stuff like that. You know what I'll never watch? I'll never watch the world's wimpiest man. 
You know, who cares about that? 10 guys working at a DMV getting paper cuts. I don't, I'm not interested in stuff like that. But as much as I'm into physical power and physical strength, what I see in that physical strength, that really doesn't get me anywhere. When I have problems in my life, when I go through situations that I don't know how to handle, it doesn't matter how physically strong you are. There's gotta be a power that's greater than your own power. And that's what Jesus offers us. God's answer to your physical energy crisis is his power. I want you to write this down. Somewhere in your notes, there's no place to kind of officially write it in. Just find a blank spot. And, and, but write this down. This is so important for you to get today. You get his power, talking about Jesus, you get his power when God fills you with his presence. With his presence comes his power. Romans chapter 15, verse 13 is a great verse on this. Here's what it says. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I love talking about God filling us with his presence and with his presence comes his power. There's a lot of people who look at me and they say, Craig, I've stepped across the line and I've, I'm a person of faith. I've asked Jesus Christ to come into my life and, and forgive me of my sins and, and cleanse me of all my unrighteousness and invade my life. And I want Jesus to be the Lord, to be my savior. But Craig, I don't sense any power of God in my life. A lot of people live powerless Christians lives. And I say, why? And here's the word that I think of when I think about that. It's the word trust. Throw that verse back up there a few words. Romans 15 verse 13, because I want you to see something in that first line. May the God of hope fill you as you trust. Does everybody see that? He will fill you as you trust in him. The key there is trust. Let me give you another word for trust. It's the word depend. When you depend upon God, God invades your life when you say yes to him. His power is totally available to each one of us, but most of us don't depend upon God's power. We depend upon our own power, our own wisdom, and our own way. On our own way, we say, yeah, Jesus, I want you in my life because I want to go to heaven when I die, but I don't want to access your power because if I access your power, if I I depend, if I trust on you, when I depend on you, you're going to want me to walk your way. Yes. Jesus offers power that I don't have. Colossians chapter one, verse 21, 29. I depend. There's the word right there. I depend on Christ's mighty power that is at work within me. Think about it. Let's go logic here. Why would God give you his power, his supernatural power? Why would God give you his supernatural power in your life for you to live your own way? Doesn't make sense. The truth is that God gives you his power so that you can live his way. Amen. That's what God wants. It says in this incredibly famous verse, Philippians chapter four, verse 13, watch this. I have the strength to face all conditions. How? By the power that Christ gives me. So there's hope. Jesus offers the hope that I don't have. Second, number two, write this in. Jesus offers me promises that I can depend upon. When I'm afraid, when I'm living in fear in my life and I'm worrying too much, I can come out of that by depending on God's promises. Did you know that there are are over 7,000 promises in this book. 7,000. Depending on the promises of God, when you're going through fear, that's what gets you through. And there's this great verse in, in Isaiah 41 where, 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 where God says, do not fear because I'm with you. That's a promise, amen? Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is not surprised by fear in our life. When you're afraid, when you're worried, you're not catching God off guard. Let, let me get really practical with you. What if you took some, some of the promises of God and you got some three by five cards and you just wrote some of the promises of God on a three by five card and you kept them in your pocket, you kept them in your purse, or you put them on the dashboard of your car, you put them on, the, on, on, on your refrigerator, you put them right up above the, the, the toilet paper roll. How about that? That's a good idea, right? Some of you are going, how, why would you do that? Because you're there every day. <laughs> Think of how, what a great idea. I'm just being practical with you. And, 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 and so there's those times when you feel like fear coming on and, and you say, you know what? I, I don't feel forgiven. And all of a sudden you have on that three by five card, wh wherever it is. First 
John chapter one, verse nine. If we confess our sins to God, he's faithful and just and forgives us and cleanses us from every wrong. And all of a sudden you're reminded that I am forgiven. That is a promise that you can depend on. Anybody just say amen to that? Hey, hey, you know what? I, I feel afraid. Joshua chapter one, verse nine. Here's the promise. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That is a promise you can count on. How about, well, does God care about what I'm going through? And when I, when I feel discouraged and depressed, does he even care that I'm going through that? How about this promise in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, that says, give all your worries, give all your cares to God, because he cares what happens to you. That's a promise you can depend on. Amen. Oh, I love that one. Craig, my finances, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. Here's a great promise. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, that God will give you all that you need. Not what you want, but God will give you all that you need from day to day if you live for him and you make the kingdom of God your primary concern. Craig, does my faithfulness matter? I'm choosing to, live, to go on the high road. I'm choosing to live my life God's way. Is there any return on my investment? Is there any payoff to being a faithful man of God, to being a faithful woman of God? Here's the promise. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse Verse six, it says, anyone who wants to come to him must believe that he is God and that he rewards those, check this out, that he rewards those who faithfully seek him. Amen? Amen. That's a promise that you can depend upon. Jesus offers all of these incredible promises that you can depend upon in your life. Second Corinthians chapter one says this, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are all yes in Jesus Christ. Man, I love that. Every day you trust something. Every day you trust somebody. Every day, why not trust in somebody who's not gonna let you down? Somebody whose love is never gonna fade, fade and is never gonna disappoint. You know who that is? That's Jesus Christ. So Jesus offers me power that I don't have. He offers me promises I can depend upon. Here's the last thing, and that is that Jesus offers me perspective of his purpose in the middle of my problem. When I'm frustrated, and all I see is that small picture. God comes along and says, hey, listen, if you trust me, if you look to me, I have a bigger perspective of your life. Here's the perspective that God has. It's his purpose in the middle of my problem. When I've lost perspective and I'm just looking at the little things just right here and now, God says, hey, Craig, hold on. You're focusing on just the little things. You're getting discouraged. You're getting depressed about that person that let you down. You're getting depressed about that situation. See, you're, you're focused on the small picture. And, and Craig, uh, God comes along and says, Craig, I've got a bigger perspective of your life. There's always a bigger plan that God has. Amen? God says, I love you, I wanna use you, I will never leave you, I will fill you, I will give you my power, I will walk with you, I will guide you, I'll give you wisdom that's greater than your own wisdom, I've got a purpose for your life, if, even in the midst of the problem that you're going through, I've got a perspective that's bigger than yours. Romans chapter five, this expectation. Remember, remember what we said? Frustration is unmet expectations. And I love this verse because here's what it says. This expectation, talking about our salvation, this expectation will not disappoint us for we know how dearly loved God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with love. No matter how you feel, there's a bigger picture. Here's a promise for you. This is the first one you ought to write down on that three by five card and stick whatever you want, but here's the first promise you ought to write down. Romans chapter eight, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. When you're depressed and you're focused in on that small picture, you need to look up because God has a bigger picture of your life. Amen? And that bigger picture is filled with hope. You, you, you know something about hope? Hope is attractive. Hope draws, I, I was drawn to Christ because of hope. I wasn't drawn to Christ because of the church. And what was attractive to me, the thing that drew me to Christ was the hope that I saw in other people's lives, in my Sunday school teacher and other people around me. I looked at other people's lives and I thought there's something different about them. There's something that they have that I don't have. That hope of Jesus Christ is so incredibly attractive, amen? Jesus wants your life to be filled with hope. 
to be overflowing with hope and joy, especially when you're going through a tough time. And one of those life-changing verses in the Bible, and I close with this, it's at the close of your notes. It's it's Jesus talking, and it's in John chapter 10, verse 10. I I quote this verse often because it's so powerful to me. And it simply says, and the part that I didn't put in your notes says this, a thief comes, Jesus is speaking, a thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And then Jesus turns and looks at the disciples and he says, but my purpose for you is to give you life in all its fullness. That is the purpose of Jesus Christ in your life, to give you life in all its fullness. Amen? I, 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 don't, know, I don't know what's happening in the world. Anybody look at the news and go, what is going on? But I gotta tell you, I I don't know a lot of stuff, but I can tell you one thing, that no one can offer you what Jesus offers you, and it's simply this, three things. A life filled with his power instead of fatigue. A life filled with his promises instead of fears. I'm just waiting for you to say amen. amen. And number three, a life filled with his purpose in the middle of your problems instead of frustration. Wow, <laughs> that's the hope that Jesus offers you today. Say yes to him. Just bow your heads and close your eyes. God, you are so good to us. You love us so much. I pray for that person right now, Lord, that just is going through that season of discouragement, depression, that person that came in here today and their heart was so heavy and they just didn't know what to do. Heavenly Father, I pray that they would cry out to you. And if their life is full of fatigue, Lord, I pray that they would would call out to you and ask that you would give them your power in their lives. Heavenly Father, for that person that is so discouraged right now and and, and that they have so much worry, so many fears in their life and they don't know what to do and they just, they're overwhelmed. Heavenly Father, I pray that they would fill their life up with your promises, that they would remind themselves daily, maybe hourly, of the things that you want to do in their lives. And then for the person, Lord, that just has so many unmet expectations and it's led to frustration in their life, I pray that today they would move from that small perspective of that person or that situation and all of a sudden they would look to you and they would be filled with your purpose in the middle of their problem. You you offer us a bigger perspective of our lives. Heavenly Father, for that person who walked in here today and is so incredibly discouraged, I pray for two things. One, that somebody around them would just offer just a word of encouragement. Say, hey, here's my number. Just call me whenever you need to. And I pray, Heavenly Father, as they leave here today, that they would realize one more time that you, God, are with them. And you want to give them the grace to make it through. Lord, help them to reach out to you and help them to reach out to the people around them, this church, their church family. In Jesus' name, I pray these things. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. God bless you.